Hello everyone, I'm Matt. I'm Chris. And I'm Scott. And we're here with the NOLA Nerdcast at the 2014 Underwater Intervention... What? Inter Wait, what? What? Oh. Oh, uh, shit. shit. All right. Hold on. All right, this is much better. Yes, but I agree. So, oh my god, you missed the best sonar panel ever. That was, was it the, hype? That was the hype of shit. Oh my god. Just shut up. All right. Let's 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 do it right. All right, I'm Matt. I'm Chris. I'm Scott. And we are here with the Nola Nerdcast at Wizard World New Orleans Comic Con 2014, and it is time for uh, lots of nerd nerd stuff. We're gonna nerd out today. What's your What are you looking forward to? Bootlegs. Doesn't matter. Scott. Doesn't matter. Oh, oh. wait, I did it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we 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 got interviews lined up with a whole bunch of uh, high profile artists. Uh, we're gonna be hitting up Artist Alley a lot, doing locals, doing we. This, this year it's just bigger. We've gotten it, more celebrities, better artists. It's all coming back. A lot more people, bigger hall. Bigger it is. Like, Look at the giant triangle head behind us. There's so many. It's a big dude. Pyramid head. Triangle head. Triangle head. You are terrible. Well, I didn't play Silent Hill. <laughs> All right. I, uh, I mean, so what, what's the game plan for this con? What are we looking at? Artists. Lots of artists. A couple of writers. Artists and writers and a couple of celebrities that you might see. If, if you could pick one celebrity that's here this year, who is your hope that we can interview? Manu Bennett, Slade from Arrow. Robert England from Freddy Krueger. Alan Tudyk from Firefly. He's, or Wreck-It Ralph if you're a kid. If you're a babby. Or if you just bought it, Justice League War, because he's Superman. Why not? But, yeah, there, there's a whole lot to talk about. There's a whole lot to do today. There's a whole lot of money to be spent. Any sonar? So, no sonar no, here. I'm no, sorry. No, you, you, Chris. Convention's over. Yeah. All right. On that note, we'll see you at the con. All right. I'm Matt. I'm Scott. And who cares about Chris because he I'm left Chris. us. No one cares about Chris. That's that's the theme of today. Um, so yeah, let's let's just start the con. If you don't know Lil Gotham, it's kind of like the characters of the Batman world dealing with different holidays or seasons or events like did, when you I remember when you started like you can tell you ran out of the major holidays and you started yeah. getting more creative did you have fun with that um, yeah I mean initially we only pitched 12 stories so 12 chapters which is like six issues right. but then they um, they asked us for 24 and so um, we didn't really run out of holidays we just didn't want to be redundant on some stuff and you know there's uh, but I I mean originally I really just wanted to do uh, fun stories the reason behind the holidays was, um, you know, you're guaranteed, like, a gig <laughs> for a while, you know, as long as there's a calendar. Um, so that helped out. But once we were uh, able to get more stories, like, you know, hey, why not? How have you kept yourself busy in the years since? Uh, I just completed a very large graphic novel called On Purpose, uh, written by Vic Strecker. There's a book there. Um, it's a hardcover sort of semi-autobiography of him and um, some fictional tales, a little bit of philosophy, like this really weird amalgamation of all these things into one cool book. Um, so that's finally done, uh, turned in, everything's printed, nice hardcover came out, it looks beautiful. Um, I'm currently writing my new creator owned series. The, the working right. title is called The Fixers. I may or may not change it, that's my working title. Um, 12 issues outlined, four issues of script done, and I'm drawing the first issue. So it's moving forward. Um, because I do all the jobs on the book, it does take a little longer than just penciling. Um, but it's moving forward, pushing, and um, I think the work's really cool. I think people are going to love it. It's such a success. I mean, Vertigo tried, like, at Comic-Con, Vertigo has released a wave of, like, new books that are very image-ish, like Coffin Hill and Federal Bureau of Physics and Wake and stuff, but it's just not quite as awesome as... I mean, it's gotten to the point where if you see a number one and it's got the image eye on it, you're like, I'm, I'm going to give it a shot because you right. never know. My hope, I mean, it was with all the new number ones, is that I hope that the books... Uh, continue, yeah, because uh, it's not a lot of books that get to forty issues. And congratulations for you guys. I, yeah. mean, I mean, to bring it back like, to you, yeah, that wasn't like you know puffing you know, right. our, ourselves no, I mean, up. Like, but the reality is, like, should. in awesome. this day and age, it's not. It, it is rare for a book to get to forty issues with the same creative team. Mm -hmm. I mean, these days oh, that yeah. just doesn't Definitely. happen. No. And then you look at guys like Ryan Otley or Charlie Adler that have like, you know, hundred plus issues. As the it's like you don't see that today at all. So my hope is that with all the new image books. That I, I mean, I love all of them. I love, I love a lot of them. I hope that they, I hope that they're around five years from now. Um, I hope so too. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I hope that 
I hope they continue because they're awesome. I hope Saga's around like 10 years from now if they want it to be. Right, yeah. You know. I believe this is the 50th year of Doctor Who. Yes. Correct? All right. So tell me, like, what does it mean to people in, in Doctor Who community and everything? Well, from uh, going to the panels and then also uh, seeing Matt, Pitt, Matt Smith also talk in the panel last night, it's a lot of people are sad to see Matt Smith go. And uh, oh, wait. I got a phone call. One okay. second. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm just doing this stupid Doctor Who thing. Let me call you back. All right. All right. I'm sorry. That's okay. Right. Uh, what, I, the, what does it mean? You also created my personal favorite, and being a little biased from New Orleans, I wanted to know, like, what your personal thoughts on Gambit was. My personal thoughts on Gambit are that he's one of the coolest characters in the team. Uh, that in terms of potential when I created him I thought he would surprise he had the potential of surprising everyone and I think the first best illustration of that came in the um, sort of the group art issue where Michael Golden drew this magnificent four page sequence where Remy and Logan go out at hammer and tongs in the danger room and Remy kicks his ass. And the thing with Gambit that you always have to remember is that he'll not only charm the living daylights out of you no matter what's happening, he will catch you, he will blindside you, he will catch you off guard, he will find a weakness and exploit it that the thing with Gambit is he will he will find his way he will resolve any puzzle he'll find his his way through any locked door whether it's the defenses in a in a punch out or the best safe in the whole world and if you are any kind of gamer, you'll recognize who's with me. It's Bridget dressed as Moxie from Borderlands. How are you doing today? I'm pretty good. How are you? I'm doing well. A, did you make it yourself? I made everything myself. I made my own pattern for this. I whole thought thing. you were going to point to your breast and be like, I, yeah, I, made, I, made kind I didn't know of. what was going to go. Kind of. I'm like an A cup, so this is a lie. Cosplayers have so many tricky ways to yeah, do that. I know. Because you would never know. I know. Isn't the trick like, I don't even know. I'm going to pretend There's I don't like know too much about that. involved and a lot of squishing. And And then the next question is, how long did the makeup take? Oh, I want to say about an hour, maybe a little bit longer. I don't know. I woke up at like 7 and started messing with everything and then had problems. and was just like, this thing. So I love Anytime someone does a Borderlands cosplay, they, they do like the, 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 the lines and the cell shading. It makes it so unique and like you always can tell yeah, where it's I got from. Cell shading even on my, my belt and stuff, and it's everywhere. There's cell You're shading. You're committed to it. I am. About your own, own personal styles, like how long does it usually take for you to knock out something that then goes, everyone ends up loving? Uh, are you doing it first? Ladies first. All right, my paintings take on average like 20 to 40 hours, sometimes a lot longer than that. Um, cause I take it from pencils, inks, and then the actual paintings and stuff like that. So. <laughs> and you, like you said, uh, you like to do your original creations and stuff. And yes. the fact that you had a death or the black cat right here is 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 the exception rather than the norm yes, for you. The exception rather than the rule. <laughs> yeah, in Savannah every Friday there's a thing called Sketch Club that we both attend. Okay. So generally, what happens there is I'll just kind of mess around until something happens on a on a block of watercolor paper, <laughs> and then then paint it. <laughs> That's awesome. You know, Chris Claremont name dropped you uh, when we interviewed him. Uh, oh yeah, he just he kept talking about you. I mean, some of it was good, most of it was hilarious. You know, I mean, how does it? How does it? How is it working with him? It's incredible. He's Chris Claremont. You know, he's uh, he's the father of the X Men. I mean, how do you think we felt when he said yes to an interview? <laughs> well, I, very excited, I would imagine. And then we got to follow up with you. He was here today, and I had the I had the uh, the pleasure of giving him some Mexican cork. Nice. Yeah. Real Coke with Real sugar coke. and everything. Real Coke. He was thrilled until he realized I didn't have a can opener. <laughs> so. You actually came up with this phenomenal idea for us. Uh, 
next year like you i heard and i was like this is fantastic yeah, you next year we, we uh what yeah, why don't you tell us a, a little bit about what you have planned and like what fans of our show and our network can look forward to next year well you know uh new Orleans has been good to me for the past i guess three years mm -hmm. and i want to do something you know give it back to new orleans or people of new orleans like the fans uh you know, how I appreciate them and how they treat me for the past years. So I come up with an idea like, why do I, you know, do something like uh, exclusive prints for especially, well, you have to be part of Nerdcast or whatever that group is. You have to be our fan, damn it. Yes. And uh, I want to do something special. And it's not going to be sale on my table. It's exclusively for, for the group. So if they want to have that exclusive print, they have to join the group and they have to be active. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, what I'm having in mind right now is do a character that represents New Orleans and maybe Rogue or Gambit or I, I can do both. That'd be cool. Yeah, and uh, you know, for next year when I come back and then I'll have the, all the prints and you know, get everybody on my table and get that for free. But like I said, you have to be part of the nerd cast yeah. or whatever group that is and, and as the show like starts like coming closer we're gonna start broadcasting that yes. making everyone be like look if you have to choose one artist to hit up this year errol c has got an exclusive free print for you guys and i mean that's just that when you told me that i was blown away like i mean that's how nice you are is we didn't come up with that idea you came up with that idea and i mean that that's incredible uh so thank you very much for that and yeah, yeah i i don't mind doing that like i said uh it's just me showing, you know, my appreciation to to people of New Orleans. Because, like I said, they've been good to me for the past years. And till to this day, you know, I've seen people like, hey, I've uh, I've seen you for the past years, and we'll keep coming back. Just let us know when you're coming back. That's so overwhelming to me. So I don't mind doing that. And I'd love to do stuff like that for, for, for people who, who you know, always visit me over here. So once, once I get back uh, uh, from the show, then you know I can start, you know, doing some rough ideas what that print would be. So watch out for that. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you very much for taking the time to talk to us. Uh, we, if if we have time, we want to get you to do the live thing of you doing a quick sketch again because that was fantastic. So we'll end this interview, do that, show you off being more awesome, let people know what they're in store for next year. Exactly. So thank you very much, Errol. And thank you for you know. Uh, promoting me <laughs> it is the second time second interview and you know people get to know me more better uh you know with this interview and yeah it's it's nice talented and humble you just don't find that combination and generous that's a triple threat so thank you and then we'll uh let, let let's knock out that drawing okay That was just in a couple minutes. If you want to see what it takes when he like actually sits down to draw, like say Wolverine, right over there, like that. That's a Wolverine when he's like like giving it more eight than hours. a couple. Yeah, eight hours. So bam, Errol, what's up? <laughs> so what does this whole fifty year of Doctor Who mean to people? 
It was huge. I mean, everyone, I think it was, it's one of the best episodes I'd seen in a long time. Um, I think people really, okay. you're right. Go ahead, keep going. Um, <laughs> keep going, keep going. It was fantastic. So that's really all there is to say about that episode. I thought it was bigger than you. It's, it's, it's very common in comics for fans to overreact to the news of a character's death. Like, how did you handle everyone when you uh, killed off Hellboy? I don't remember any fan reaction at all. Um, maybe I just wasn't... I, I don't know. I just It didn't feel like I was keeping it a secret. So I don't remember... So what do I remember? I have a very bad memory. Um, I do remember that one of the websites somehow got wind of it before we did it and so we had to make an announcement like the week before so retailers wouldn't go hey we would have ordered heavier but what I didn't want to do and what I never want to do is make it a stunt for sales so it was part of the story but what I really wanted to do was keep it completely a secret so that when people turn the page, suddenly it catches them by surprise. Holy shit, you killed Hellboy. I didn't want a big cover that said, Hellboy dies, this issue. I didn't want a stunt. I just wanted it to be part of the story. So, um, and I think when I did it, it was clear because of press or whatever that I was returning to the book to draw Hellboy in Hell. So I think any disappointment that Hellboy had been killed was immediately offset by the news that I was back drawing the comics. So there, right. there, there was never any period where he was really gone. I'm a big fan of your stick figures, sketch cards. <laughs> I actually prefer them to anything Thank that you. he's done. Yeah. Uh, you know, I guess we should point out that the logo of the Nolan Nerdcast was actually drawn by Monty. So uh -oh. I guess we have to give props to... <laughs> I haven't seen any proof of it. I didn't yeah. see him put ink to paper. Would you be able to draw us another sketch card today? Yeah, we could do that. We could do that. Me? Yes. Me? All right. All right. Because I think it would be very funny if you're the one I pay to draw something today. <laughs> I earn nice. my keep. Nice. I earn my keep. All right. We'll what do we got? Good. All right. I would I'd appreciate it. You know what? Artist choice. Artist I'm not choice. picky. Last year I'm you drew a really good Nick Fury. I'm going to do a caricature. <laughs> Nick oh, Fury. Can you draw a Monty? Uh, yes. And Monty, are you doing commissions today? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. All day. All day, blank covers, how, cards. Hmm? How free is your timetable right now? It's pretty free right now. Do you, do you think it will continue to be so? Hopefully not. Hopefully not. That's the goal of being here. I don't want to be free all day. I want to have something to do. So. <laughs> Wishful thinking. Yes, yes. So, oh, he's drawing it right now, live. Um, <laughs> Look at this. Ooh, I'm a fan. All right, so you've been here every year. How do you? What do you think about the con this year as opposed to previous years? It's huge this year. It's enormous. I am surprised by the amount of people in here this year. I'm waiting for a penis joke from Mongoose. <laughs> uh, my laugh will be enough for that. Fair <laughs> enough. Um, oh, oh. Right, what so do we got? This is uh, this is my caricature of Matt Feminine. Uh, as you can see right here, this is him. You can tell by the glasses. And he's naked because I got the pixelation right here. That's really good pixelation. And if it's not pixels, it's shingles. Yes. <laughs> shingles of the penis. It's a it's common bees. affliction. It's bees. It's bees. Bees. What's like a top seller one? Like which character? Honestly, okay. man, it varies from show to show. Okay. Like every area has its own favorites. Like one at one show, you know, my Animaniacs will be my best selling print, then the next will be Turtles, and then the next will be Ponies. You know, it's just everything, a little bit of everything. Yeah, like last year here, your print with the Florida de Lee of like the Batman mm -hmm. characters, this year you did Doctor Who, yep. Florida de Lee, which I think it actually looks pretty nice. Mm -hmm. Has that, what made you think of that? I mean, you know, I enjoy the show, and the uh, you know Matt Smith was here, and you know it's New Orleans. How could I not do a Florida Lee for New Orleans? Yeah, exactly. Personally, I don't like Doctor Who, but I, I still think it looks really nice. Love love your art style. It's very unique. 
this was just it's really great to run into you again and it's always fun to see what you're going to debut again you're one of the few people we know outside of uh the con and you've always you're always really nice take the time to talk to us so even when it's just buying random comics at the store so thank you for taking the time to stop and talk to us again well, you're very welcome. You guys are awesome. I love seeing you guys, and just have a great con. That's what cons are about, having a great time with good friends and silly costumes and capes. How long does it take you to walk from one end to the other in costume without being stopped for a picture? It definitely varies on costume and how much certain assets are displayed. So well, That's what's nice about this, is that it not only is an awesome costume, but it doesn't like have to rely on that to get people to pay attention to it. Not that it's wrong either way, or but it's really cool that you have such a great costume and it's just like, it's, oh, well done. Thank you, guys. I don't know if you can tell I'm a Green Lantern fan. <laughs> just, oh, I'm well, such here. a nerd. Got a picture of that? <laughs> no, you Thank have you. The power and fear. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's get to your art because okay. I feel like we should showcase that. In the past year, you've kind of exploded with IDW doing a whole lot of your My Little Pony stuff. And I mean, like, you're selling the covers and you're doing a lot of like the variants and everything. A, how did that even come about? And B, how does it feel to perpetuate the brony <laughs> population? Uh, a, um, that was uh, my rep and uh, local comic store. <laughs> they started doing the, um, the retail incentives, so each comic store can pick an artist and have them do the covers for just their store. So Double Midnight Comics in Manchester, New Hampshire. Um, I started doing all the micro-series covers for them, and I kept hitting my deadlines, and I did a few emergency projects, so that just kind of kept you know, going, and everybody's responding really well to my style, which is awesome, because you know, like I've, I've brought portfolios to other companies and they, they have a very specific Look, style yeah. that they're looking for so they'll be like yeah great but no but IDW is amazing with like really accepting of different styles and they're all super great guys and everything so that's been really fun um, so yeah I just kind of kept doing those and you know every time they need a new pony cover or a variant you know and, it, and little known fact about Jason David Frank he actually makes bracelets I bought this today he's a uh, there's there one okay no I did uh, not yeah. His daughter is, is is an entrepreneur on the side, and because he graced us with this interview, it's the coolest thing ever. But my my follow up question for you on this is: I saw something online, and how, the whole White Ranger versus Scorpion yeah. YouTube video. How did you? How did that even come about? Man, that was uh, kind of like what happened with you all. I mean, I just did the interview. I talked to him, and usually I get a good feeling with people. Like you know, I don't need to like research you and figure out who's who and he called and wanted me to do it and uh, I was like yeah sure I'll, I'll do it I had no clue who he was and I thought maybe he had one fan I had no clue or millions of fans it just didn't matter he's a really nice guy and I agreed to it then after I agreed to it I watched his work and I was like wow that's it's gonna be sick and then I did the voices and then did that little cameo in it which led into a lot of stuff for us right now we're filming a movie uh, in two weeks it's gonna be an awesome movie it's an original uh, you know, we got the reality series that he jumped in on, executive producer, so we got It's My Morphin' Life coming this, this year. Uh, and me and him got a lot of good stuff that we're trying to get some Saban-approved uh, movies and series and all that stuff. So it actually was a really good connection, but I kind of hooked up, hooked up with him just off of how he was and how he presented himself, you know? So it turns out being, being nice and professional and courteous, it has its own rewards. Well, I think so, man. I mean, we, we, this is the second time on the show now, and, you know? Last time we did a good little interview, and uh, you know why not? So, how have you enjoyed your run on Spider-Man? And tell me something funny about Dan Slott. <laughs> well, um, it's uh, it's amazing to be the amazing artist in Amazing Spider-Man. You know that kind of thing. I I drew I grew up um, reading Spider-Man, so when I finally got the chance to actually draw that book that I really love because I, I I worked before in the spectacular Spider-Man but you know it's not the same like having you know uh, the amazing Spider-Man uh, you know gig to do so so when when they when they let me do the book I was really really thrilled and it's it's been exciting every every day since last since since that day and you know working with Dan is like Amazing, because he he knows everything about. But it's like a Wikipedia. It's ridiculous. It's it's amazing. It's it's incredible. 
And uh, when we Skype, and he always says, like, you have five minutes because I need to tell you something quick. And, like, share the problem. And five minutes turns in, into three hours every time. Because then he starts telling me, like, what's going to happen, like, the next two years in Spider-Man. And he's like, okay. Why do you think the show's been on for a long time? Because they have the ability to regenerate, and so they can get more actors. That just sounds dumb. It sounds stupid. It's mildly stupid, but that's what being a nerd is about. Loving stupid things too much. But it has to make sense. It does make sense. No, it doesn't. There's so many plot holes. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of plot holes, but there's a lot of black holes in space, and it's about space, so every plot hole is a black hole. Well, space is stupid, just like Doctor Who. Assassin's Creed, are you having fun with it since this is your first video game, your, your branch, you're now doing something new? Like, how are you having fun with being a, a pirate today? So what I love about this costume is, number one, it's more comfortable. Let's just okay. talk practical, okay? okay? Uh, it's way more comfortable. No cape. I hate capes. They're constantly getting stepped on, constantly. You know, they, they look great, and in theory, they are awesome. When you're standing back here by yourself and there's no movement. Exactly. Uh, but this is awesome because I've got so much to work with as far as posing for photos. You know, I've got two swords, I've got the hidden blades, I've got four guns. There is so much to play off of, and people just really get into that. Whereas with Thor or another character where you only have one weapon or one prop, you're kind of limited. The poses that you can do at some point. Yeah, you have to get even more creative. But this just kind of flows naturally, spur the moment around the crowds, so it's fun. I didn't... At first, I didn't even know you were in The Hobbit. I, I didn't recognize that was you, but my... my look, look, I know, look, look at that. Look, look, look. Uh, uh, uh. Totally. My, my thing, though, is Arrow. Yeah. You as Slade and, and Deathstroke, and just seeing you this season in the costume, mm. there's a picture right there of it. Oh. It's awesome. Uh, These are my impersonations of my characters, you see. There, there, there. <laughs> I... I how much fun are you having playing like such a character as opposed to say someone like your roles on Spartacus and everything being like part of such a nerd friendly like comic book show? Uh, look, I mean, I like to affect people and you know if the character that I that I do has an effect, you know, I mean I'm very lucky. I mean Spartacus is a global hit. Uh, obviously Arzog is one of the biggest, you know, one of the biggest movies, The Hobbit, uh, one of the biggest grossing movies ever. And, uh, you know, uh, now being in the DC comic world, you know, and, and as you say, affecting like these comic book, uh, you know, uh, fans that, that follow this stuff religiously. Um, yeah. You know, I, I, I was lucky enough that at this Comic Con, Marv Wolfman is here, right. who created Slade Wilson and Deathstroke. And, and, and I mean, the guy came over and was like, and he said, you're doing such a great job. You know, oh, that's, that's cool. I mean, I mean, to know from the creator that I'm inside the character and that the character is, is, is right and he's excited about it. And, you know, I mean, that, that's the biggest compliment I could p possibly get for, right. for, for Slate Wilson, you know. Yeah. All right, guys, it's, uh, I'm Matt. I'm Scott. And this has been a wild convention. Uh, I mean, we, we did a whole, wait, where, where's, where's, where's Chris? I don't know, I haven't seen him the entire convention. No, Scott. We've got to go back. It's your kid, Scott. He's in a lot of trouble. Oh Come on. Oh my God. Chris just got out of the closet. We've been, I went to Wizard World 2020. It's not good, Scott. Your son's a Doctor Who fan. Oh. <laughs> That's the worst. Oh my God. It's sad. <coughs> he's, That's, the, he's the 15th uh, Doctor in his timeline. Oh my God. How does it know that Parker grew up to be such a disappointment to you? He's not my kid. I don't know what he's talking about. That's his mother's son. Oh my God! So, uh, so we've had a good convention, yes. Chris. I fought dinosaurs. It's not good. 2015, bad times. It's weird. You seem to be. You did a lot of running around, and yet it doesn't look like it. There's still there's still food in the future, Matt. <laughs> we killed dinosaurs and ate them, and we ate their hearts and gained their power. Oh, so what's your ability now? Is it dying uncontrollably? It's early extinction. Oh. So, all right. Talking about the con, what was your favorite part, Scott? 
all the butt hurt Dr. Doof, Dr. Who fans. <laughs> is it Dr. Do? I don't know. He's a doctor or something. Doop. Yeah, for those who don't know, uh, Scott made up a new segment this show where he went around and interviewed Dr. Who fans and basically trolled them. It was, it was a joy. Check him out. I'm sure everyone saw it. Um, everyone hated it. <laughs> no one was a fan. All right, Chris, what about you? Favorite part? Uh, that was, was it all the interviews he did? It was uh, It was the when the insectoids invaded in 2017. All right, what about the 2014 one? Oh, I wasn't here for that. Oh, not at all? Not at all. That's weird. Where did you get that art? It's your art. Oh, okay. I was holding it for you. That's a, pl that's a Doctor Who plot hole right there. How did you get my art if you weren't here? Daleks. Okay. Um, I for R2-D2s. R2 R2 for me, it was doing the interviews. We got some really good ones. I bought way too much art, um, but that's every year. It's been growing. This con's... Oh, my God. Are you doing your sonar again? I forgot that was a joke we had back in our time. I've <laughs> aged five years. It can. It shows. Yes. Um, it looks like you have more gray in Man your beard. Man of the past. Learn from my mistakes. Learn from humanity's mistakes. Is it mistakes. to eat vegetables and fruit? No. They will lead the uprising. Oh, my God. All right. Uh, Comic-Con, New Orleans 2014, Wizard World... I mean, who is your favorite, like, uh, either artist or creator or celebrity that you got a chance to talk to? I don't even know. They, nice. Good they're insight. They're good they're insight. They're is it Johnny cool. Segura again? No, he was cool. He was cool. Uh, that was always fun. Um, I like uh, Manu Bennett. Yeah. That dude was... He was hilarious. Manu Bennett was shockingly, like, awesome. I mean, he, I knew he was, but he's also really nice and personable. Oh, yeah. From the artist side, Errol C, always fantastic. I mean, he did greatness for us, and he's he's got his hype for what he's going to do for us next year. Uh, check it out. Check out that interview. Um, yeah, Rob Guillory, Cody Chamberlain. There's a lot of artists that we talked to. What about you? It was. Uh, I wasn't here, so I don't. Oh know. Oh my God! Pretend you were here, hypothetically speaking. If I were, if I were hypothetically here, it was uh, buying 30 Godzilla movies. The highlight of my life. It's weird that really, you know, both both of those things sound true. They are true. It's the truth. All right. Well, uh, I mean, any last words you want to do as you're professionally answering your phone? What? Huh? Sorry. What? What? I got stuff to do, man. I got tags. Hold on one second. All right. Street passing ain't no joke, son. All right. All right. Anyway, uh, let let let's wrap it up. I'm Matt. Uh, <laughs> oh, you are here. I'm Chris. You I'm Scott. Oh, I like you better, Chris. You seem nicer today. <laughs> and uh, we're the Nolan Nerdcast, and this has been our second year covering the Wizard World New Orleans Comic Con. Can't wait till next year. And uh, yeah, this has been great. Come by if you haven't done it. Try to make it next year. All right. What up? <laughs>